with no way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free.
Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. If you've been following us, this is an exciting book with some principles in it that God is going to use to not only give us a new direction for our life, but I believe it's going to answer a lot of questions here now. The Apostle Paul, in this, in this letter, is speaking from his heart, and some things that he directs at us are going to bring us to some answers today. Um, I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from the NIV. When you have it, say amen. amen. We're going to read from verses 16 to verse 30. Listen intently to the word of God. I repeat, let no one take me for a fool. But if you do, then tolerate me just as you would a fool. So that I may do a little boasting. In this self-confident boasting, I am not talking as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many are boasting in the way of the world, the way the world does, I too will boast. You gladly put up with fools since you are so wise. In fact, you even put up with anyone who enslaves you, or exploits you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or slaps you in the face. To my shame, I admit that I was too weak to do that. Whatever anyone else dared to boast about, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast about. Mm -hmm. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this, but I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have, gone, I have known hunger and thirst and have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Uh -huh. Who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. If I must boast, mm -hmm. I will boast of the things Woo! that show my weakness. Yes, yes. Let's pray. Uh -huh. Father God, we thank you right now for your word. God, we thank you for your presence. We are standing here, Lord, in awe of your goodness, in awe that you will take a few moments to share your presence with your people. So, God, while we're sitting here with hearts of gratitude, speak, Lord Jesus. Speak to the answer of anxiety and trouble in someone's heart. Speak for someone, Lord, who is trying to find a solid place or foundation to rest their feet. Speak to someone, God, who is looking for just one moment of peace today. God, we thank you today that as you are taking us higher, we will be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and we will accept, Lord, you are looking down on us and sending us the blessing. We give you all the glory and honor. Lord, bless me as I speak today through you. You speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow today, we're going to speak from this thought. Fairy tales, fantasies, or facts. Mm -hmm. Which is your faith built on? <laughs> Fairy tales, mm -hmm. fantasies, or facts. Mm -hmm. Which is your faith <laughs> built on? Mm -hmm. We're looking at a second week in a message that I started last week from this book of Corinthians, and everyone should hold on. You get ready to go for a ride on what Paul was trying to show us in these latter days that's coming to pass. In this book of 2 Corinthians, where we are, 
Paul founded the church at Corinth on his second missionary journey. You can find that out in the 18th chapter of the book of Acts. And when you go into the book of Acts, you'll find out that he's stayed there a year and a half. After a year and a half, in the, book, in the city of Corinth, he decided to leave. And when he left, he established a church. It was a growing church. It was a good church. But when he checked back two years later, something was wrong. Mm -hmm. They weren't doing what they used to do. They were not holding on. They had fallen off. And so Paul wrote a letter to this church. I shared with you last week that we don't have that letter. Even though this is 2 Corinthians, it would really be the third letter Paul wrote. Because the first letter Paul wrote, we don't have, and you can go to 1 Corinthians, the book we call 1 Corinthians, which would be the second letter. If you look in the fifth chapter, you'll find out that Paul speaks about this lost letter. That is why he wrote 1 Corinthians in response to the Corinthians writing back to him from his inquiry of the first letter. Do you remember 1 Corinthians? Right? So in 1 Corinthians, he was answering the question that they sent back to him. And you remember the church was in bad shape because the church had been divided. And the church had all kinds of issues running through it. When Paul left, they were established, but they fell off. How do you go from shouting one minute to not even trusting God the next? How do you go from worshiping God to not even sure God can help you in the next? That's what Paul found in this church. You remember what they were doing? They were divided. They were going around talking about, I'm a Paul. I'm of Apollos. You know, because Apollos was a great orator, so some people wanted to identify with Apollos. And Paul was a great preacher and had facts and, you know, he had a spirit of God with him. Some was identified with Paul. Some were identified with Peter. I'm of Cephas. And then Paul had the right that you recall to them to make sure they understood something. He said, look, guys, it don't make a difference. Apollos water, somebody else planted, but it's only God that gives an increase. And I told you, somebody else, you be hooked on no man.
wrote this book, he went back there to talk to them about how they had let up off the pedal. They had let up. They stopped worshiping the way they used to. You know the message. You used to read. Now somebody got to make you read. Ah. You used to praise God. Now the preacher got to holler praise yeah, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You used to get on your knees and pray. Matter of fact, you used to fast and nobody even asked you to fast. Yeah. Now you need for a church-wide fast before you turn your plate. I know y'all don't like me. When you turn your plate down. And Paul said, I want to know what happened that you don't love God the way you used to love God. And he said, he went there right to the church. And Paul found himself hurt and troubled. But he said, what I want you to know is I'm going to try to straighten this church out. Because if anybody should let go, the way you guys are treating me, I should have left that church. Oh, I'm talking to somebody now. Don't you dare leave a church because the way some man treats you and you got Jesus in your personal relationship. Because when you go to the next church, all somebody got to do is treat you bad and you're going to leave that. I'm preaching now. You're going to leave that church also. You better stay there. And if you don't stay for nobody else, you ought to stand up like you salute the flag and tell somebody, I'm staying for Jesus Christ. part two of Don't Let Up, we headed for a breakdown. But I'm telling you why the message was called that, because Paul could have been headed for a breakdown. He could have listened to what everybody else was saying, and he could have been all in his feelings, and he could have not, but he said, no, I'm not doing that. He said, I don't care how bad the circumstances get. I don't care what anybody else says to me. I know who it is that I should be worshiping. So Paul decided what I hope everybody watching me has decided, and I'm giving you a word this morning, just stay serve with the same effort and with the same intensity. I mean, you ain't serving God like you used to. You used to be excited when you came through the door to the church. You brought in excitement. Now nothing excites you. But when you think If you go down, uh, when Paul opened his book up, the first four verses, he symbolically talked about, I actually betrothed you to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He put himself in the place of a father. You remember biblical times that you betrothed your daughter and sons to a foe. So he said, I was your father. I, I built the church. I betrothed you to Jesus. Now, you're following some Jesus that I don't even know about. Woo! You let somebody take you out of who I betrothed you to. Yeah. He said, I'm, I'm thinking you act just like Eve when Satan came to her and made her eat the fruit. He said, I'm not some saints that used to shout. Now they're eating the fruit. Uh, yeah. He said, Woo! now I got to address that. Then verses 5 through 11, he said, all these false teachers were talking, and he said they were trying to make themselves be like me. He said they were trying to talk about me, because now the church said, Paul, you're not eloquent like Apollos. You haven't had a university education, Paul. You don't know anything. I know you're doing Jesus. So they got tricked and bamboozled into believing that the eloquence and the things they saw, all the things they like was better than God. And Paul said, well, oh, here's where we draw the line. Go to verse 12. That's where we got our first point last week. And that is, Paul said, y'all can talk all you want. I'm going to keep on doing what I've been doing. You better let somebody know. Keep me 20 
and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. So I can cut the legs out from under them folks walking around talking about they just like me, all they're boasting. They're not like me. Because uh -uh. I know who I'm holding on oh, to. And so we found out the first thing Paul said I'm not gonna let people do is talk me out of my miracles. Uh -huh. Remember that? So y'all don't realize the reason I'm, I'm not going anywhere, the reason I'm staying with God, because you don't know my story. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody, you don't know the midnight hour when he plucked me up. You, you don't know how God, where God has brought me from. How I many know there's some miracles in my path that I can't even explain to you? There's some moments I almost lost my mind. There were some days when I didn't know if I were going on. I know y'all sitting up here looking at me like you never had the kind of problems I had. But are there any real believers in here that will tell you there were some moments when it looked almost sketchy? It looked like I wasn't going to be here. But somehow the Lord brought me through. Paul says, you know what? And I do not want to live a life without the potential of another mirror. Tell the devil, no, no, keep what you got. I might need me a mirror for tomorrow. part of this message. Point two, and that is fairy tales, fantasies, or fiction. Look at Paul in verse 16. He said, he's going to show you my life built on facts. Uh -huh. There was a time you could have told me God wasn't working. But that time has long passed. He said, my life is built on facts. And Paul started at 16 verse. He said, so let me be a fool for a minute and boast like y'all boast. Uh -huh. He said, that's not my he said, boasting is your stuff. See, because the Corinthian culture was competitive. That's where the Olympus games were held. The Corinthians, that's where the, all the philosophy, uh, the dates were held in Corinth. So Corinth wanted everybody to just out-talk each other. So up pops all of these elegant teachers going around speaking that Paul didn't know what he was talking about. So they had all of their university degrees and they were talking to people out of serving Jesus and they were talking to people into worshiping them. Then they were taking the full money. Paul said, and some of you are so smart that you're dumb. You listen to people who come to you boasting about themselves. They take your money on television. They tell you that you can do this and you can do that. Lay your hand on the screen and speak this word or buy this town. He said, what you need all that for when you got me standing right beside you? All you got to do is have enough that I wish I had a witness to trust in me. You don't need all that stuff. Look at all Did you have, did you see this child? allows. Yeah. That means whatever God allowed in your life, he's not going so far. That's right, man. That's right. 
I don't care how bad you feel. God said, I, I'm going to put the stop on how far the devil can work in your life. The second thing I gave you was Paul prayed for you. Remember I said that? Another reason you know you were built to last is because Paul prayed for you. And I thought about that. I gave you Peter telling you that he prayed for Peter because uh, remember Jesus said, Simon, Simon, uh, uh, Satan desires to have you. And he said, but I prayed for you. That blew my mind when I thought about God praying for me. Some of y'all didn't think about it, but when I was writing this message this week, I thought about it again. If God's praying for me, who are you praying to? You can also 
But just remember who's taking you home and in whose arms you're gonna be. So darling, say the last dance. You better say that last hope. You better say that last praise. You better say that last prayer. Don't you forget who it is that took you to the dance. Don't forget who it is that kept you in the dance. Go home with the one that brought you here. I wish I could help somebody understand that it's not that I can just let go of God. He's the one that's been holding me up. Hallelujah. Oh, Paul said, don't you forget. Thank you. Thank you. you talk to these false teachers you want to. They could help you out there when you was out there smoking them drugs. Come on now. Come on. They're not there to help you when you were drinking those 40s. Oh, yeah. 80s. Some of y'all. 40 on top of 40. Yeah. What's 40, 40, and 40? Some of y'all are drinking that. Come on now. All I'm saying is they couldn't pick you up. But how many of y'all once God got his hand on me? It's been a different life. And I'll never forget what the Lord has done. I'll never forget. Knowing that tribulation works patience, patience. and patience experience, mm -hmm. and let trouble have its patience work. And then he says, works experience and hope, and hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So when I struggle, I get the experience, and God gives me hope. No, I give me hope because when the enemy comes and takes something, I can look at the enemy and say, You did that two years ago, you didn't do anything. So you might as well try something else. And then he said, and then he starts saying, verse 16, he said, look, I don't want to be a fool because, you know, uh, that's not how I talk. They thought Paul was weak because Paul didn't boast about himself. But Paul said, look, I robbed other people. Because I didn't want to ask you guys for money because I asked you for money. You think I wasn't right, but you let the other folk take money from me. So if I did take money from you, you think I wasn't right. I couldn't win. He said, so I'm just going to depend on God. Amen. I'm not going to take any money. I'm going to trust God. He said, and then you walk around talking about I wasn't somebody. But he said, but you don't realize that true power not only comes from struggle, true power comes from humility. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the reason you argue is because somebody don't treat you like you think you're supposed to be treated. Come on, How are you talking to me like that? Who are you without God? Come on, preach We get this big picture of ourselves and really can't do nothing if God wasn't on our side. And we demand other people to treat us like something and we stand up like we got there by ourselves. Don't you realize that it's the humble person? You can't find too many humble people, but when you humble yourself, God got to get involved in your battle. Anything, 
Yeah. I just I walked into the hospital full of vim, vigor, and Holy Ghost. To the man said, to the man said, <laughs> then the man said, if your appendix burst before we get to it, the poison will go off through your system. All of a sudden, this flush of anxiety came over me, and I started worrying. And then all of a sudden, the pain started hitting me left and right. It seemed like all of my good, all my Holy Ghost power just left me. And I know some of you wouldn't have done that. I'm trying to be truthful. I prayed myself back, you know, so I could be ready. And then all of a sudden, next door to me was this little girl. I call her little girl. She was 16, having a baby. And she was screaming and hollering. More pain pump on me and anxiety. Seemed like as soon as I get myself together, this little girl started screaming. When I heard her scream, she said this. She was saying, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Lord. And so God had nothing better to do than to speak in my mind. I limped off my bed. And I walked into her room next door. And I said, I'm a preacher. I will pray. Before I could get, I will pray out. That little girl ran and grabbed my neck and was talking to me. And I'm trying to get her off my appendicitis body right now. I didn't want her bruising nothing. But she grabbed me and I asked the grandfather. The grandfather was in there with her. Can I pray? And I prayed. And they prayed with me. Yeah. I'll never forget. I don't know when, but when it was all done, she was smiling. I limped back to my bed, and I looked around, and all of a sudden, a supernatural peace. I still had pain. Yeah. But this supernatural peace. And it was astonished me, because I, I looked at him thinking, God, you know, what's going on? And, and all of a sudden, God told me what happened. He said, the pain left because you were thinking about somebody else. You sick because you don't care what other people are Wow. 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 You're hurt because all you think about is who you is. And when we don't, so God just taught me, and I went through that operation and came out. I, it, it was a blessing. And I remember when the girl was screaming, all I wanted her to do was shut up. That's what I prayed. Just shut up. But then when I changed the shut up to let me go pray. Hear me. All of a sudden, God blessed me. Humility is how God blesses us and brings us through the trouble. And the last thing is, Paul said, and true power also comes from what you built your faith on. Go to uh, 2 Peter 1.16. Mm -hmm. 2 Peter 1.16 2 Peter 1.16 It says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Mm -hmm. For we did not follow in our need cleverly devised stories when we told you of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter is saying, I did not build my faith on some fairy tales, mm -hmm. on some stories, and some myths. He said, I built my faith on my eyewitness account of what God has done. Yeah. I'm sorry. What I know about God, I didn't get from everybody else. I got some, I got some facts of my own that I work on. I got my own story to tell you why I'm serving God. That's why when I come into the house of God, I know that my facts, which you don't know about, my facts are the ones that keep me worshiping because I know what God has done in my life. So I build my life on the facts of the word. But Paul, Peter was saying what Paul was trying to explain, and that is everybody's life is not built that way. Let me explain it to you. Some people in here, you build your life on the fact of happily ever after. Wow. Wow. Once upon a time, you, you build your life on a God that always makes everything turn out happily ever after. You build your life on a God that you don't want to be in trouble long. I don't want to see nothing. I don't want to have no problems. You build your life on something that's a fairy tale. Ain't no word in this Bible. God says you will not have trouble in your life by serving him. As soon as trouble comes into your life, you get mad. It's not real. 
19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Of, of, of the sinners, right? No, no, no it says the right. righteous. That, that means somebody who said, yeah, the righteous. Right. You, you want to cry? Cry about the Bible. You know what God said? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You better quit trying to build your faith on fairy tales and nothing's supposed to happen. They forgot about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. Oh, with all your heart. Oh. Lead not to your own understanding. See, what we do is, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them. Yeah. Oh. Some of y'all walking around, you don't hear the word many. You hear any. I don't want anything to happen to me. No, God said many things don't happen to you. But that's why you got me as a saint. I wish I had somebody who got a praise right there. How many know many things have happened in my life? But weren't you glad you had a Savior on your side? Praise God for the many, 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 but the delivering out of them all. That's the kind of God we serve. And then there's other folk in here. You are the make-believe Christians. You live a fantasy life. Instead of trusting what God is yeah. doing, you start fantasizing all the stuff you want to happen. Stay wow. with me. And you run around with these big dreams and daydreams and you want stuff to change. But the problem is you don't put the work in. Wow. Yeah. You want this big fantasy, but you don't put the Well, first of all, let me tell you the difference between a fantasy and a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. The difference between a fantasy and a fairy tale. A fairy tale is something that's in the make-believe realm. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Right. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's made up. But a fantasy is something that could be true, but you got to work to get to it. Oh, so you just fantasizing about something you're not willing to put in the work to have. Oh, I wish I had somebody more. Yeah. Okay, just let me make it plain. Make it plain. Uh, you fantasize. The, the lottery just became 34 million. Wow. And you start fantasizing about hitting the lottery. So you buy 25 tickets a week trying to hit the lottery to fulfill your fantasy. And that fantasy is you walking around spending all your money trying to buy lottery tickets. When you should not be building your faith on a fantasy, what you ought to be doing is thanking God why you buying the lottery tickets. He supplied you enough money to buy the tickets. He gave you food in your house. He's putting gas in your car. What you ought to do is thank God for the life you got. And quit fantasizing about a life that may not ever come. So when your things don't work out the way you fantasize, you stop worshiping God. Because you're like you're going on a fantasy. I've been asking God for this for years and it ain't come yet. And he said it was a fantasy. Okay. When are you going to say, God, you got a plan. I'm going to trust your plan. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I know somebody don't like me right now, but that's what's wrong. You sitting around, your faith is built on your fantasy. You know? No. God said you got to, Paul said you got to build your life on facts. Nah. Paul said, I'm going to tell you my nah. facts. I can tell you how I've been left in the deep. I can tell you what's happened in my life. I can tell you what God has done in my life. And so these fantasy believers think that if they keep on fantasy and fairy tale believers think, if they keep on doing that, some kind of way their life's going to get better. But you'll never find contentment when you trust anything but the facts of the Lord right, God. Right, right, right. Are you all with me? I'm with you. Go to 1 Timothy 6 and 6. It says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. So once you understand that you build your life on the scriptures, you start becoming one of them kind of Christians that, I'm very close, now watch this, y'all, that say, you know, you get in trouble, but you say, hallelujah, anyhow. Amen. 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 I got some facts that this thing ain't on. Yes, sir. I got too many facts to see here. And once you become a hallelujah, anyhow, Christian, that means whatever the devil, devil does to you, you keep praising, you keep hallelujah because you know that anyhow means God got this. <laughs> I'm 
press toward the mark of the high calling. Philippians 3, 13, 14. See, the reason some of y'all gave up because you don't think your life going nowhere. But I'm pressing because God still got a plan. I'm pressing and the enemy says it's over. But God still got a plan. Thank you, Lord. So when God allows trouble in my life, you start playing, I'm done. When God allows trouble in my life, if you don't, if you don't start saying, I'm here. It's <laughs> If you don't understand God's plan, let me put it this way to you as I close. Everything God allowed in your life That's right. is for your benefit. That's right. Amen. Paul said, I press Amen. because if God allowed it, Amen. he must know I need it. Yeah. First, God does it for correction. There's some of us in here, God corrected us before we ruined our lives. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he did. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about, like Jacob. Thank you. He had to give Jacob a limp. He said, Jacob, I want you to be the head of the 12 sons. But I got to do something that you don't act right. Yeah. So God gave him a limp. Yeah. Some of you guys gave a limp. God gave you a limp because if you didn't have any limp, you'd be wild and out right now. So he gave you a limp so you can make sure you come to church. Amen. So every time I think about going another direction, my limp act up. <laughs> I remember I'm nothing without God. I got a witness. I got a limp and say, oh, Jesus, I need God right now. He don't want me no more. He said, come, come here. Come on, son. He said, I got to do something to you, get your attention. But if I get it, I'll put you back in the right direction. Amen. Amen. And then he said, the last thing is for protection. I love this. God said, I'll protect you. But I need you to know it's not your strength that does it. Come on. Yes. It's your weakness, your weakness that makes me show up. That's right. Wow. Amen. Let's close. It's the last point. That TV. Yeah. The last point is, so the point of this message was keep doing what you're doing. Keep remembering of what you already survived and learned. And the last point is keep preparing for what's next. You will never, ever be disappointed if you prepare for what's next. Look at the text. Paul saved it to the end of this chapter. He said, when I first got saved, I had to be lowered down in a basket. In Damascus, they were trying to kill me. When I first got saved, you realize some of us, we first got saved, had a bolder spirit than we have now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We first got saved, we fight any demon that said anything about it. But then over the years, we've lost it. So the only way you prepare for what's next is you got to remember, this has been going on since I've been saved. Now, you're not shocking me. I'm ready for what's next. And as your pastor, I will tell you this. There is going to be the next. But when the next come, God still has power. Come on, you got to preach with the today. You got to preach with the today. Bring it here, God. Bring it to somebody in here right now. You have seen that, you know what? I'm not letting up. And I'm not going to break down. Try what you want. I'm with Paul. He done brought me too far for me to give up and let this be the one to stop. Not, not this, not this, not this. After all I've been through. Somebody who said, I need God in my life. I'm not saved. Lift your hand. Every head is bowed. Is there somebody in here that says, you know what, Pastor? I need to rededicate my life. And I will tell anybody listening, even those listening virtually, you need a church home. You need a place where you have a cover. You just can't even run around from church to church. you got to be somewhere where God can use you and God can feed you and God can help you know this is where you need to be for where you are right now. So all I'm telling you is you need a cover. Fantasies, fairy tales, facts. Which one is your faith built on? I'm not going anywhere because my faith is built on facts. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you this morning that we've all had troubled times, but Paul showed us in this text that he was a servant of God. And all the things he went through was for the purpose of God's kingdom. Let us have the same mindset that whatever happens to us, we're going to keep pushing 
and building your kingdom. Lord, I pray for everyone listening, everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray for everyone in here. Somebody who's about to check out, give up. Let them go. Don't let up. Don't break down. Build your faith on the facts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now then, was able to keep from falling, present your fathers for the birth of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let everyone say, Take it to him and leave it there. I was down, but with the no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody, breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free I tried it for myself and now I know what he did